Hi, I'm Nick Dice. I'm Jacob Kramer. And this is our MSU ME 475 final project. We decided to analyze a compound bow riser utilizing the tools and techniques learned over the course of this class. The goals of this project were to model a complex 3D object and run a finite element analysis using 3D brick or tetrahedral elements. Subsequently, we collected and reviewed the stress, strain, and displacement data. In addition, we also have included a fatigue and fa safety factor analysis. Our 3D model was based on the Matthews Z7 bow. The riser is the portion of the bow that bears the structural load of the limbs. This particular model's riser is milled out of a solid piece of billet aluminum. One of the most important factors in archery design is weight. A lighter bow reduces fatigue of the user and makes for a more enjoyable shooting experience over extended periods of use. The Matthews Z7 incorporates this in the riser geometry by reducing unnecessary material. This reduces weight while optimizing the structure stiffness. Our model design has a weight of 2.42 pounds. We decided to run our analysis in ANSYS Workbench because it offered us increased usability with its improved graphical user interface and increased flexibility by allowing us to design our model in NX before importing it into Workbench directly. In contrast to this, it is necessary to pre-process and clean up 3D models imported into ANSYS APDL before they can be analyzed. In the time allowed for this project, the task of pre-processing a model of this complexity would have been nearly impossible. The mesh of our model consists of 10 node tetrahedral elements, each having a base length of 0.2 inches. The Matthews Z7 bow has a max draw weight of 70 pounds. This places two opposing loads onto the riser on both the top and bottom, one of 126 pounds and one at 92 pounds. These forces were distributed over the two raised areas on both the top and bottom of the risers. This was a simplification made to the model as the real bow had a much more complex limb to riser contact geometry. It was assumed that this simplification did not affect the model sufficiently at distances farther away from where the load was applied. This slide shows a screenshot of our stress results. As you can see, a stress concentration is developed directly underneath the hand rest of the riser. This is where the maximum stress is located. A complete numerical summary of the collected data will be discussed in the conclusions. In addition to calculating stress, strain, and deformation, we also ran fatigue and safety factor simulations. These tests resulted in a minimum safety factor or an effectively infinite lifespan of 1.758. As you can see in the figures below, there's a deformation in two independent planes. After all of the analysis was complete, it was found that our max stress was 6,826 PSI. This is well within the maximum yield strength of material of 69,000 PSI, which is necessary to be able to withstand the high cycle fatigue experienced over the life of a typical compound bow. The max strain was found to be 6.73 times 10 to the negative fourth inches per inch, while the max displacement was found to be 2.44 times 10 to the negative 2 inches. The use of 3D finite element analysis was imperative for this project because not only did bending occur in two separate planes, but a non-symmetric stress flow was seen throughout the riser that would not have been captured using 2D analysis. It can be clearly seen in the figure shown on the right of the page.